Here at the lab. Why? Just curious. And by curious, you mean I'm a suspect. Everyone is. That's fair. Random killings are more unlikely, after all. Yeah. Well, I got here around 9. I was the only one here at the time. I always check the labs to make sure everything is in order before I start working. Is there any way you can prove this? Sure. I logged in using my student ID. Jupiter leans over her laptop and types a few lines into the keyboard. Look, you can see the time when I logged in, right here. She points at the screen. The monitor is lit up with a list of login and log off times. Sure enough, she came in at 9 o'clock yesterday. What about the others? When did they come in? Jupiter taps a few more keys. According to the system, Nathan and David logged in at 10, as usual. Eren didn't, but he got special permission to stay behind and wait for you. Did you see either Nathan or David yesterday morning? I didn't see either of them until I met you. So even though they logged in, they may not have been here. For instance, one of them could have used both cards. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. I tried to give them freedom to show that I trust them, but such a thing can be abused. Thanks, we'll talk later. You know where to find me. Looks like there's something of a soap opera going on here. How so? Well, Sean used to be the lab head, but that role was passed on to Jupiter even though Nathan wanted it. Jupiter is now dating David, but David used to date Chance, who is currently dating Sean. I don't suppose you drew out a chart for this? Not really. With relationships like this, I can only assume that people are going to want to point fingers at each other. Take any accusations you hear with a grain of salt. Hmm... Geralt? No, no, no that, that saying is fine as it is. I'm not feeling it. So, any negative feelings still brewing? I think so. Nathan's a bit raw about things. Jupiter's definitely still unhappy. Strangely enough, David's pretty relaxed about the whole situation. He doesn't mind that his ex is with Sean now. He and Nathan are really positive about Sean. To hear them tell it, he's some sort of Prince Charming. Hmm, Prince Charming? No, that's all wrong. Hang on, I'll figure it out. Stop using your powers for evil, or at the absolute least, completely unnecessary nicknames. That's all for now. <sighs> Gotta get that Grault. Bro, let me tell you about Grault. Have you ever had a blood reaction? <laughs> That's something to just drop on her, completely out of the blue. She's uncomfortable. I'm sorry, if you don't want to talk about it. Yes. Right, no problem. I won't ask about it anymore. No, I meant... I have. I had a blood reaction? What happened? Yeah, because it seems to be, like, not quite a stronger version of your regular reaction. It's like a Requiem stand, I say, without having seen part five yet, so I don't actually know what a Requiem stand entails. Lee May's eyes grow distant, and I wonder if I've dug into a memory that I shouldn't have. I forget. You don't remember what happened? I forget who I am. For a time, I am no one. You mean you black out? I hear thoughts of another. They fill my head until I no longer hear myself. You can actually hear that person's thoughts? Not just feel their emotions? She nods numbly. I'm sorry. As am I. I did not understand what I was doing until then. That's all I want to talk okay. about. I guess I could... Slide in the door. I guess I can just wake him up. I can try. Aaron's still sleeping. I should give him more time. Talk to everyone about- talk to almost everyone about their alibis for 10 to 11. And? Well, Sean was our tour guide for most of the hour, and then he says he went to work at the university center. I remember they left Aki and Lee May at the lab for a while. Chance says she was at work the whole time. Aaron's still sleeping, but I assume he was in his room all morning. Jupiter says she was in her lab for the entire hour, but no one saw her. Nathan and David were in the lab together for that hour. Allegedly, according to each other, even though they might be lying to continue their card checking cover up. If your log on times confirm that all three of them in the lab. Aaron and Chan seem to have the shakiest alibis then. True, but I don't know if either of them have a motive. Chance absolutely might, but we, of course we wouldn't know. But I can tell Dr. Johansson treated both of them very well. Well, it's not like the others are airtight either. Even if other people saw Sean at the center, there's still the gap of time after he left Aki. And just because a computer confirms a login doesn't mean that that person was there. So what next? Search for motive, but do try to be discreet. Hang on to your cover for as long as you can. Right. That's all I got for now. Don't wander off. Wander off.
Like, no, I'm kind of embroiled in this, both personally and professionally. Oh, you know what? That's probably the cue for Aaron to wake up. Hey, wait, wait, what you got? Aaron stirs! Let's talk to him immediately. I hey. want to throw up less. Does that count? I guess. So let's give him the rundown. Can you think of anyone who might want Dr. Johansson dead? <laughs> no. Okay. I don't think he stayed in any place long enough for anyone to hate him. What? He was always zipping around the world, giving talks and stuff. The only person here who he really spoke to was Jupiter. She's basically in charge of everything. He pauses for a moment to consider a thought. Maybe Nathan will get the job now. Nathan? Dr. Johansson appointed Jupiter as head researcher here, even though Nathan's been here longer. I heard he got super mad about that. You weren't here when it happened? Nah, I only transferred here last semester. Who told you about Nathan? Um, David, I think. He's my roommate, and he introed me to everyone when I got here. Has Dr. Johansson been acting strange lately? Strange how? I don't know. Distracted? Scared? No idea. Only met him twice, and he was pee-busy both times. Like, did he see it coming, bro? But I guess him coming here is kind of strange. No? Why is that? He was supposed to be on a European lecture tour, but he cut it short to return. I'm not sure why. I heard that he never cancels a tour. Maybe because he heard Mr. Otten died. Something must have brought him back in a hurry. Do you remember when he decided to come back? Mmm, sometime last week? Uh, hard to say. Sometimes the days just run together. And he didn't say why he cancelled it? Nope. Where were you yesterday morning? I shouldn't cast- this is the wrong order to do it in, but the order doesn't affect anything in the game. I'm just saying, like, theoretically in real life, this would be something I hold off on. Here. Sleeping. Sleeping? Well, usually I'm supposed to be at the lab, but I got an exception because I was supposed to meet you. Man, no wonder you feel guilty about sleeping in today. So, I slept in. Did anyone see you? I wouldn't know. I was asleep. David was probably long gone by then, if he wanted to get to the lab on time at least. Do you remember anything from yesterday that might help figure out who killed Dr. Johansson? I'm trying not to remember anything from yesterday, you know? Sorry to dredge up bad memories so quickly, but it's important. I know it's important. Doesn't make it any more fun. Let's see. Didn't see anyone I know on the way here. Kizaki looked pee worried, but he didn't say much. Wait, on the way out, I saw Chance's car drive by. Chance actually may have done it. I don't remember who actually did it. Are you sure? Pee sure? There's a kind of dent in the back shaped like a pumpkin, or maybe a squash. But she was leaving the campus, which is weird, you know? She told me she didn't arrive on campus until after 11. Why would she be leaving? She lied. You know that she lied. She came in on a scene that took place before the discovery of the murder, which was at, at 11, because you know it was at or after 11, because the bell was ringing and that was what set it off. I don't know. I could be wrong. Seriously, it's... Cool. It's a delicate balance. You want the characters to be just a little bit ahead of the viewer. Or it's, you're gonna get stuff like this where it's just like, you're, you're an idiot. Ask more questions. Lee Mei's clearly an assassin. Talk about that. Okay. Either that or she's absorbed an assassin's knowledge. Didn't you say you were going to check up on Aaron? Ah, uh, see. Si. Is he awake now? Yeah, he was when I last saw him. Excellent. If you don't mind, could you step outside? What? I really don't feel comfortable leaving you alone in the lab. Uh-oh. Didn't see that one coming. Don't worry. I'll be back soon. Great. What now? I glance around and tentatively give the front door a tug. Locked, go figure. Circle around the building, search for a way in. The back door is locked too, obviously. No way I'm gonna find the code this quickly. My only option is to break in. Ha, like I'd even know. I'd have to be some sort of criminal. I'm afraid to ask, but Aki might... No way, there's no way she can do something like that. I glance up at the clock tower in the distance. This might be my only chance. I guess it couldn't hurt to ask. I jog to the fountain and wave at Aki. What's up, Khan? You don't know how to break into a building, do you? Which building are you talking about? Uh, the biology lab? That's a pretty high security building. It'll be difficult. But can you do it? Of course not. I knew it. Nelky can. I probably should have guessed that. He must have seen them punch- Yeah, of course. 
So should I go talk to him? No need. He's already on his way. Meet him behind the lab. And bring him this. Aki tosses something to me. I can catch it in both hands. It's a pocket-sized screwdriver. Screwdriver? You just carry one of these around? You never know when you'll need to put up a lot of shelves. Okay, then. Actually, that, I mean, if you're considering that it came up this time, and presumably has come up other times in the past, it's not unreasonable. Naoki is waiting for me when I arrive. I believe you need this. I hand Naoki the screwdriver and he immediately begins to unscrew the faceplate on the security pad. So, um, you learned how to break into places. Great conversation topic. The circumstances were different. Naoki doesn't bother to look at me as he removes the plate and pulls out a tangled collection of wires. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I mean... I'm sorry, but could you just give me a moment? Right, sorry. Naoki sorts out the wires in the box and picks out two. We only have a few seconds of time, so as soon as I open the door, hurry. I'll have to stay out here to reset the alarm so no one gets suspicious. Got it. Naoki takes a deep breath and closes his eyes. Go. The door clicks and I fling it open. Duck into the lab and shut the door behind me as quick as I can. Time to get to that printer! Printer time! Printer time! I approach- ooh, tech support. I approach the printer and inspect it. Wires, plastic bits. I'm not exactly well versed in this stuff. There's a sticker on the front. It's got a phone number for customer service. I pull up my phone and dial the number. Jeez. Hello, you've reached Harvard Packet. How may I direct your There's call? no way you'd ever have the time to do this. Um, hey, I got this broken printer. Just wondering how to fix it? Please wait one moment, sir. I pace back and forth as the cheesy hole music plays. I don't have much time here. Are you serious? Are you not even gonna, like, try to figure something out? It's gonna be extremely loud for someone who walks in me while I'm on the hold. Thank you for holding. How may I help you today? Um, I've got this printer that isn't working. Model number TD4715. What color is the blinking light? Orange. That means the ink heads need to be cleaned. It's a common problem with that model. Unrealistically knowledgeable. Hold down the power and the stop button at the same time for three seconds. I push down the indicated buttons and wait. The printer starts whining and something inside begins to spin. Okay, it's making noise. The printer whines a little longer and the paper feed begins to spin. Oh hey, I think it's printing. That was easy. Is there anything else I can help you with today, sir? No, I'm good. Would you be interested in taking a 50 minute survey about the service you received today? No thanks. Are you sure? You will be entered into a drawing to win a $100 gift card to- I'm fine, thanks. Thank you for calling Harvard Packet. I hang up and hover around the printer as it whirs and sputters, but so far nothing's printing. Come on. With another screeching whine, the printer finally spits out two pages. I should get more hype, that was insane. Printing? Thank you! I snatch up the papers and make a mad dash for the exit. Just as I put my hand on the back door, I hear the telltale sound of beeping on the other side. Jupiter, why did you choose the back door? I turn and race for the front door. I slam my shoulder in it and stumble out of the lab, hoping that Jupiter didn't see me. I take a few moments to catch my breath before looking down at the crumpled set of pages in my hand. Alright, what was Dr. Hansen trying to print here? I hope this isn't a chain lever or something. Looks like a formal suspension notice. Dr. Hansen was going to suspend one of the students? It doesn't say who this is for, but the reason listed is unauthorized access of confidential information. What's the second sheet? It's a list of times and dates along with the same string of numbers each time. I don't think I can figure this out on my own. Maybe I should ask someone. I wonder... I wonder who would... Who would know this. And we're gonna find out what to do with this... Uh, I'm just gonna ask Jupiter. I'm gonna walk right up to Jupiter I'm gonna ask her. On the next exciting episode. Because... It's been... The lengthy stream! It has been good progress stream! Good things happened.